Hello everybody! In this tutorial we will learn to insert annotative dimensions in a layout, especially when we have viewports with different scales. This video has essentially two parts. In the first part we are going to draw the dimension line step by step, and for that I provide this exercise where you can download it from the description of the video. On the second part, I'm going to explain you the tips that we must learn to manipulate the dimensions that we want to show or not according to their scale. So, let's learn a little bit. So, let's start drawing the dimension lines in the viewport of the main drawing where the scale used is 1 per 10. Now we are back on the model space and the ribbon is on the Annotate tab. First, I recommend you to set a specific layer for the dimension lines. It's this bar located on the dimensions panel. By default, they are placed in our current layer, but if I want to avoid changing layer all the time when I want to add the dimension line, the best is to set a specific one and in this case, I choose the layer dimensions. Then, specify the scale here of 1 per 10 to match the scale of the viewport. This is very important as we are working with annotative dimensions, so don't forget this. Now I'm going to start adding radius dimensions for the circles in the gear, and that's easy, you just need to look at the PDF file as all the information is there. Now let's place one at this arc, and the last one at this small circle. Ok, now if you have noticed, the dimension lines are green instead of blue, the color of the layer dimensions. But why is that happening? Hmm, I think I'm guessing. First, I'm going to switch to the Home tab and look at the Properties panel. The object color is set as green instead of following the color of a specific layer. Because of that, I have to select all the dimension lines, and this time I would just pick one of them, right click and go to Select Similar. With this option, AutoCAD automatically selects all the objects of the same type in a specific layer. Then I just need to change the color to by layer and now the dimension lines are blue which is the color of their layer. Now I press escape but note that the next object I will draw will come again in green. So with no object selected I have to set the color by default as by layer to avoid having these problems. Next let's make these angle dimensions of 60 degree each. First, I'm going to draw three lines from the center of the gear. For the first line, I have to hover one of the circles to find the center, click on it, and I'm going to make it, for example, horizontal. Also, don't forget to have the polar tracking turned on, that's very important. Then, for the second line, I start again from the center, but this time, as I want it with an angle of 60 degrees, I need to press the button tab to switch to the angle insertion, type 60, press tab again, and if I'm happy with the length, I just confirm it. Finally, for the last line, I'm going to use the command mirror as it's going to be faster. Select the 60 degree line, press enter, and make the mirror line along the horizontal line that I made previously, and here select to not erase the source objects. Now I'm going to add an angular dimension. Pick these two lines and place the angle around here. Ah, and this is important. Sometimes we have to move a pointer a little bit to make sure this endpoint disappears from the screen. Ah, now I can click. So, what would happen if I clicked when the end point was displaying on the screen? Basically, the dimension would go to the center and you wouldn't be able to see it. Next, I press enter to reactivate the previous command and place the next angle between the two lines below and this time, yes, I'm going to use this end point in order to make both arrows connecting exactly there. So it looks nicer and more professional, maybe. Now let's go to the dimensions on the details 
And we will start with this one, which is a bit more challenging. Ok, let's draw first a temporary circle that overrides these arcs, where I have the teeth. And at the top I'm going to draw a line as well. The method I'm using is hovering this midpoint, move to the right horizontally following the polar tracking, type 20, and then move to the other side and draw a line here with 40 mm of length. Ok, now I am able to add dimension lines, but first I have to match the scale of the viewport, which is 1 per 1. Now I can click on linear dimension, then pick for the first point this midpoint, and right next move in the vertical direction until I find this intersection. Next, let's add another linear dimension measuring the horizontal line that I inserted lastly, as you can see. Look, the length is also right, it measures 40 mm. Then I need an angular dimension on the slope, so I'm going to pick this line, then the horizontal line, and I can add the angle here of 70 degrees. On the other side, there is a radius, so this time you have to click on the radius dimension, then click on this arc, ok, in this case this is a polyline, but it works anyway. In this case this is an arc with radius 5. Ok, the detail one is done. Now. I encourage you to add the dimensions by yourself for the details 2 and 3. I believe it won't be hard for you. So you can pause this video right now, and once you have finished, just click on play to continue watching. And maybe you have done a bit different than me, and correct as well. Now I'm going to zoom the area where I have this little circle, and activate the command linear dimension, but this time let's use the alias, the shortcut, which is DLI. Now, to find the center of the circle, we need to hold the boundary first. Ah, and by the way, if you cannot snap to the center, please make sure that the snap mode center is active. If not, it will not appear and consequently you cannot snap to the center. So that's important. Ok, let's set the dimension line up to the intersection with the other circle, and click again to place it right there. Next, for the second dimension, we could actually use copy or mirror, but I decided to press enter to repeat the same command, and I'm just doing the same as before, but to the other side. Then the circle has a radius of 10 mm. For the detail 3, let's see if you did the same thing. I added a temporary circle here, and like for the tooth, I placed a horizontal dimension at the top, and let's type 5 here to leave it 5 mm above the line. This is a useful thing if you want to have your dimensions located at the same distance from the objects. It's just to avoid some being far away or others too close. I like to use this method even it's not something required. Now the vertical line, I use this midpoint to connect to the intersection below. And finally, I'm going to add a radius dimension to place a leader indicating the radius of the circle, which is 50 mm. Then for the lines that were helping me to add the angle dimensions, I also want to change the line type to a dashed or to a dotted style, instead of this continuous one. After selecting the three of them, I'm going to click on line type at the properties, then go to other, and in this window we can see the types already loaded in the project, and if we cannot see the one that we want, it's possible to load from the AutoCAD library, here. From this list, I'm going to choose, for example, this dotted style. 
I click on OK and close. Ah, I have to pick the lines again and switch to the dotted style. Now the distance from each dot looks too close and it's hard to differentiate if I don't zoom in the drawing. Now if I switch to the paper space, you can see the dots on the main drawing show with a spacing that is quite decent for this viewport. Now we could scale the line type, but we have to know if we want to have the dotted style on the paper or in the workspace, because that depends on the scale that you are using on the viewports. So, to change the line type scale, we have to access the properties of the objects and change the value here, which by default is 1. If I want to change the spacing to half size, I just put half of the value, which in this case is 0.5. And now you can see the result by looking at the drawing. So, this exercise is finished, with all the dimension lines appearing in each viewport. And don't forget to erase also those circles or lines that you used just to help you placing the dimensions. Now, let's learn how the annotative scaling actually works, how to display just the dimensions that match the scale of the viewport, and by changing a scale, is it possible that the dimensions update automatically? That's what we are going to see right now. Ok, but first, I'm going to give you an aside note. The dimension lines in all the viewports are in grey color here, instead of blue which is the color of the layer dimensions. The reason is because in each viewport, I will go to the layer properties, you can see that I set a different viewport color for the layer dimensions, this grey color, and I did the same for the other viewports. I'm telling you this because sometimes I find it more convenient to work with light and lively colors on the workspace and then when it's time to print, maybe it's better to set different ones. Now let's focus in the main drawing and how we can control the dimensions that show in the viewport. By the way, first, as I'm still in the paper space, I'm going to select these three polylines as I drew them here on the paper, it's important, and I'm going to hide them temporarily. This hide option works until I end object isolation, the option which was below, or until I save and close the file, so next time you will open the drawing, those rectangles will appear again. Now let's switch to the model in this viewport by double clicking on it. Then. I have to switch off that option here to enable it to change the scale or move the workspace once again. So now it's 1 per 10 and if I change it, you can see that the dimension lines do not show anymore. As you remember, they are annotative dimensions and I created them in the scale 1 per 10. So I have to get back to the annotation scale to making them appear. Actually, this is happening because this button, Show Annotation Objects, is deactivated and it says At Current Scale. By pushing it, I change this setting to Always Show Them and you can see that now the dimensions that are inserted in scale 1 per 1 are also appearing here in very small size. So I'm going to turn off that option again because I don't want the dimensions of the details to show on that viewport. And now let's move to the next button at the right. It scales to the annotative objects when the annotation scale changes. Now it's off, and let's see what happens if I activate this. Now anytime you change the scale of the viewport, the dimensions are readjusted to the new scale, but what happens in reality is that I'm adding another annotation scale to those dimension lines. This can be something very useful but tricky at the same time. So I recommend you to have that option always turn off, except at the moment you want to change the scale of the viewport. Then, if I go back to the model space and click in one of those dimensions, I can see all the annotative scales of that particular object. Now, let's access the properties of this dimension line. 
And here in this MISC section, you can see that the object is annotative and it's showing the scale 1 per 10. But if I click on this icon, look that this window that appears shows all the scales of that particular dimension. And here I can add more or delete one that I don't need it anymore. For example, this 1 per 5. Okay, it looks like we reached the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't done it yet, subscribe to Cad in Black. There you can find all the content of tutorials for beginners. See you on the next occasion.